I have been posting at least one sciencey thing somewhere on YouTube every single week for the last 10 years, and I can safely say I've never seen a response like I did when I posted this. The problem is an epidemic of mis- and disleading content made to scam your attention, written and read by bots created by probably nefarious individuals for monetary gain alone. After I highlighted what I saw as a growing problem, a glut of channels with clickbait and spam and AI-generated stolen content flooding your watch pages, millions of you seemed to agree. And after that, I got contacted by many of you who wanted to help. I got interviewed by the BBC World Service, and I even worked directly with a company that exists solely to destroy these scam channels. But we'll get to that in a minute. This video represents an update on everything that has happened to me and happened generally as I see it after we were one of the loudest voices on this problem. So where are we now? Unfortunately, a couple months after the video, not much seems to have changed. Same white on black logos, same trick bait thumbnails and topics, same videos cross posted to multiple channels by whoever owns them. But there have been some interesting developments. One of the channels I used as a spam example was actually taken down or deleted. Two channels now explicitly point out in the top line of their descriptions that they are read by AI voice clone, just as we suspected. Now that seems like a direct result of increased attention to this issue, and I'll take that any little bit that I can as a win. One of the channels that I put on blast, one of the largest, was Riddle. And after I put out the video, they went through the effort of making a fully animated and voice overed hit piece about yours truly. Look at that. They made me channel executioner. I think there could have been more blood. Riddle has since taken their video down, but I reacted to it in real time, just minutes after it went up, during my Office Hours podcast. I eventually took down my response as well. It didn't fit the topic I was talking about. The gist of my response was that Riddle deliberately misunderstood my criticisms. And seeing how not much has changed, I believe my criticisms are still valid. Oh, and this guy? He's not the creator or owner of Riddle like they make it seem. He's a prolific and admittedly very talented voice actor, but he's just like the dozens of other voice actors hired to voice these channels, if they're humans at all. All of this effort from them because I just took a few seconds to point out them using a similar title and thumbnail for a video. Well, I'm sure glad they never did that more than once, or more deliberately, and obviously. Man, wouldn't that be embarrassing and further prove my point? Oh, can you imagine? Just walking headfirst into hypocrisy like that? Another entity I called out was much angrier with me, but they didn't put in nearly as much effort. Instead of a video, I got an anonymous email from ostensibly one of the people behind these scam channels. They were ranting about how nothing I could do could stop the spam machine that they have created, how it's all about the money, how only they understand the business and that YouTube could care less. Oh, and if you're wondering, the email is redacted here because I'm covering up all the homophobia, anti-Semitism, and racial slurs in it. Classy people. The vast majority of responses I got, though, were from people like you wanting to help, and help you did. Like I suspected, the rabbit hole is pretty deep here. You found the same business emails linked to multiple scam channels. You found the cut and paste job listings that are sent out to recruit voiceover actors. You even saw inside some of the businesses and how they, as we suspected, try to make the most amount of content with the least amount of effort as possible, sometimes by deliberately directing employees to crib from other channels. One of you was even a former scriptwriter for one of these channels and more or less confirmed exactly how they work. Then something bigger happened. I got contacted by the misinformation desk at the BBC to appear in a video investigation of their own. And I highly recommend that you watch it. The video is in the description. In it, they find more examples of stolen content and scam and spam. They interview their own experts, including yours truly. And they do an experiment with kids that has some troubling results that speak to the effect of these videos on their growing brains. And at the end of their video, YouTube actually responded, and they said this. YouTube told us that they recommend YouTube Kids for under 13s, which has a higher bar for videos shown. They said they're committed to removing misinformation from their platforms. They also directed us to information panels that show additional context on conspiracy-related content. We found this was only present for a few of the videos across the 50 channels. 
They didn't comment on advertising revenue they may receive from these videos. Are these responses satisfactory? Well, no, I don't think so, at least not in the face of an exponential threat. Everything we've gone through so far makes it seem like we've made just a little bit of a dent in this problem, but that turns out to be pretty naive. As I found out, behind the wall of misleading thumbnails and titles is a nearly bottomless pit of content theft and criminality. We'd have single viral videos being stolen upwards of 100,000 times by 100,000 different channels. My name is Brennan Clement. I'm a storm chaser. You may have seen me on Netflix series Earthstorm. I was featured there, as well as my YouTube channel, WX Chasing, and my company, WX Chasing. I go around the world and shoot extreme video from weather, whether it's it's tornadoes and hurricanes, and volcanoes. I left a, a well-paying job with a great future and jumped off into the unknown, and I've made a little niche business and living out of it. My videos have been stolen repeatedly for years, and as a videographer who makes a living licensing content, um, I have learned how to protect my work. And I started seeing my colleagues suffering the same uh, same thing I was going through. These channels have been trying to hide under the guise of fair use with copyright, and it is affecting me. It's affecting my clients. I started a business with uh, a couple of partners called Viral DRM, and we just protect, we're the digital right managers, and we just protect the copyright for other major creators out there, videographers, photographers, and we act on their behalf to come in and take content down, uh, file lawsuits when it's appropriate and do everything we can to shut the piracy down. Having started this company and working with your clients, what do you think is the true scale of the problem here? It's hard to see on the front end, but now that you've done some investigating on the back end, how big is this issue? We started off with weather channels doing nothing but weather, and they were just spamming the same weather videos over and over and over again with these outrageous headlines and outrageous thumbnails. Same thing you're seeing with the science fan, we're seeing on the weather spam. Yeah. This is true against uh, across aviation, it's true across history, it's every aspect of uh, every genre on YouTube is now being spammed like this. It's heartbreaking to see because I know it's every one of these genres, there's videographers, photographers going, going through the same thing we're going through. YouTube does, of course, have a process in place to deal with stolen content, even content that tries to hide under the guise of fair use. If you believe a channel has stolen something of yours, you file a copyright strike, which gives the offending channel three options. They either wait 90 days for the strike to expire, contact you and ask very nicely, please, thank you, retract the strike, or they can submit a counter notification, either because they believe they used the footage fairly or they're trying to run out the clock. The system is fine in theory, but easily breakable in practice. Any channel that is a YouTube partner will get a full week to simply delete the videos they had already made their money on and avoid the strike. A channel needs three strikes on three separate videos within the same 90 days before it is subject to real consequence, like deletion, meaning that scammers can and do make sure that they only have two strikes at any time in a 90-day period. 11 copyright strikes a year is totally acceptable if you delete and make private videos you spent almost no time on anyway. Finally, if someone you strike really wants to fight, they can submit a counter notification, which is a legal request for YouTube to reinstate content that was removed due to a copyright removal request. Again, fine in theory, but in reality, what it does for the scammers is prolong the entire process and make it less likely that you are gonna go through with it. They know they're in the wrong, but they don't expect most people to go any further than this, not wanting to waste time and money. But this is where viral DRM comes in. They are willing to file federal lawsuits, freeze Google AdSense accounts, and get entire scam channels, some with tens of millions of subscribers and tens of thousands of videos, deleted entirely. How many takedowns and lawsuits do you think you've filed so far? It's five or six, but some of them are bulk because mm. we, have, we have gotten counter notifications with false information. Mm. We had to subpoena Google to get the real information. When we got the real information, we saw that there were multiple different accounts with multiple different people in multiple different countries, all given the same, same fake counter, counter notification information. 
Mm -hmm. So we could prove they were working together, organized, and we took them all out. We, we, we've got uh, another court case on December 15th. At the time I'm recording this video, right before New Year's Eve 2023, Brandon and Viral DRM have now done some real damage. A major Indian news outlet, News Nation, has been hit with 40 to 50 copyright strikes, and as a result, they have deleted 27,000 videos, hoping to escape any penalties. Future Unity, who you will see in a second I have a huge problem with, has also been sued. Brandon says that Future Unity, quote, reach out to us begging for removal of the copyright strikes. They will still not identify themselves, though. They claim to be in the United States, but want us to reach out on a WhatsApp account with a country code in Malta coming from random Gmail accounts, end quote. In other words, they want to try to intimidate Brandon first. I mean, just on one of our rounds, the, these channels have probably ge generated, you know, I hate to guess, I, I know it's high seven figures, probably getting up in that eight or nine figure uh, range for, 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 for the channels combined. Anywhere from 10 to $100 million. Or more, or more. Or how many channels just in a ballpark figure are you identifying that are doing this just for your content specifically so that we, oh, you know, don't talk thousands. out of school here? Thousands. Thousands. Have you learned who these people are and where they are? Or is there a general trend that you notice in either of those? It's all over the place. For the, 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 the science channels, you've been hitting a whole bunch are in Canada. There's a couple in the US, but most of these are all foreign actors. Pakistan, Iran, Albania, Russia, UAE, Saudi, Qatar, Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, that's where it's all coming from. Like, like I say all, I'm saying greater than 90% just from mm -hmm. those actors, from those countries. How has generative AI, which is still in its infancy, how has that impacted the problem as you see it right now? Uh, what they are doing is they're using AI generated voices. We even had uh, one of our, our clients has a, a very popular YouTube channel. He has a, an amazing voice. He's a singer. He chases tornadoes, great cinematographer, great storyteller. He, he's got everything you want for a YouTube personality. He, mm -hmm. He's fantastic. And they've trained an AI voice that sounds like his while they're stealing his content. Wow. Narrating over the top of it. Yeah. So that's one way it's been affecting it. The other way is there's AI editing programs now. A lot of these channels are doing, I don't want to generalize all these channels at one because there's different levels of this. What they're doing uh, is putting one to two minute segments together for the top 200 clickbait titles and, and, and uh, genres you can find. Put a video together with 10 segments to equal 12, 13 minutes, make sure they hit those mid rolls and all that good stuff, maximize ad revenue. Mm -hmm. They're using AI to generate SEO tags. They are using AI generated thumbnails that are so absurd as I'm funny. <laughs> yes. And then running that video. Now these channels, it's not just, it's not just one channel. That one channel has a channel in 16 different languages. Yeah. And that one channel has four other channels that also have channels in 16 other languages. And then all of a sudden you have uh, other groups that just have 40, 45 channels. What are the real actionable things that it could be possible for the average person to do? The easiest thing to do, if you're a viewer, is just don't watch the channels. Notice the clickbait. If that thumbnail doesn't look real, it probably isn't. Especially like top 10 or top five, or uh, can't believe this is captured on camera, or the drone captured something on top of this mountain you can't believe it when you see, <laughs> or you know, like it's, it's, just, it's just really clickbait. Just avoid it, just avoid that channel, uh, report them as spam, Go about your business. Speaking of people being stolen from, I heard you had a little uh, surprise for me as well yeah, that I haven't. Uh, you know, I'm sure they may try and copyright strike you on this, but I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you. So you see the channel down here? No, that no, that's what that's one of the specific <laughs> channels that I pointed out. Yep, that's that's no. one that's one of the same logo, same thumb, and that is my footage of the puppies. The results of their analysis are enough for the entire world to take quick action and talk noble. Are we at risk of having genetically altered, studied, 
despite their potential to give significant insights into the dirt, how many visible populations remain. Oh my goodness. Various <laughs> these populations are you recognize that guy? They are bounded I do. By geographic Look, or and they have the same AI voice. A region with a oh, this is, this is just completely, dogs in this is just completely shameless, huh? Noble city this is just situated it's ripping the whole thing. Miles from yeah, and I had to edit your content out to make this. That way uh, they didn't have any value, even though we're being critical and it would fall in fair use there. This oh, is oh. So, yeah, so repeating the same, the same clips over and over again. That, uh, I, I, I feel maybe, maybe not exactly how you felt all these years since this is one of the first times I've, I've seen this, how, how this could be infuriating. Like one of the things I'm most proud of that I've done is try to go to some of these very uh, controversial places and get footage that no one else has. I mean, I think I have the best footage of these dogs probably in the world, but then to have someone, you know, getting 50,000 views on one of these specific channels, I said, take that footage is, 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 is maddening. I say 50,000, that's only 50,000. Some of these channels, when they steal our content, they're getting, uh, we've taken videos down with 60, 70 million views. Jeez. So they're making money off of your your trip and hard work going to Chernobyl yeah. into a into a disaster zone cost me tens of thousands of dollars to do what I did yeah yeah and uh, and and you're doing it to raise money for charity yeah yes so so what we do is we 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 find when we go after a channel we we go after them and find multiple instances of video that's been used to where we can hit them you know five six strikes at a time and. When they counter notify, we actually file federal lawsuits on, yeah. on those channels. So if you don't if you don't file a federal lawsuit, they counter notify, it goes away. They keep running your video and keep making money off. So you were so, trying to address the problem of actually putting in the effort that they don't expect people are going to put in. Right. And if and if you're gonna file a federal lawsuit, you better have the evidence. So, you know, we have to download all the video, we we take uh screenshots in situ with with our content and their content side by side. Yeah. We take screenshots of all their thumbnails. That way they say it's science. You can be like, yeah, I'm looking at your thumbnails. That's not science. That's not mm -hmm. how science works. And then you look at their about page and it's nothing but a, a long list of why you shouldn't copyright strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're the trying to thing. intimidate you so you don't do it. Yeah. And if you do copyright, if you do have a problem with copyright, don't contact YouTube, contact us. That way when you contact us, we'll just delete the content and the evidence is gone. Right. And so. So yeah, so you know, you're a content creator. Love to have you join Viral DRM, and we can look out for your content. And when it comes up, we can do exactly that for you. You don't have to worry about it. To date, Viral DRM has sued more than 70 channels, and not one of them has shown up in court. Just recently, they took down a channel with over 12 million subscribers and 240,000 videos. Why? Because more than 8,000 of them contain Brandon's footage. Well, Kyle, I appreciate all your time. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for addressing this problem. I know we're coming at it from different angles, but we're both butting our heads against the same wall here. And I'm, I'm glad you're standing up for it. And I thank you for that. <laughs> well, hey, thank you for reaching out. Thank you for addressing the actual scope and scale of the problem and for getting yourself into the trenches where they don't expect you to be fighting. So um, keep fighting the good fight and uh, hopefully Everyone who watches this and is interested in this issue can go to Viral DRM, connect videographers, photographers with Viral DRM if they know they're having this problem and uh, follow all the advice that Brandon has given us in this video. And maybe we can make a little bit more progress in the right direction. YouTube, if you're watching, you can just reach out to me and I would gladly help consult on this problem with respect to science content specifically. You already have my name, phone number, and home address. Let's talk, baby. If you're a videographer or photographer who you think Brandon could help, Viral DRM's information is in the description below. If you are a viewer, dislike these videos, just don't watch them, report them, or tag the original content creator they are stealing from in the comments below. For my part, in the meantime, I will try to keep you updated on this if it needs to be updated, and I will continue to make educational content that I think is truly worth your while and I don't have to trick you into watching it.
What About Me could trick you into watching something. Until next time.